Eric Hoven is the son of the infamous Young Earth creationist Kent Hoven. Virtually everything he says is word for word copied from his father, and consequently has already been completely and utterly ripped to shreds on YouTube. It would therefore be a total waste of time to make a series of videos critiquing him, but I don't have anything better to do, so let's have some fun, shall we? Evolutionists say 20 billion years ago, there was a Big Bang. Now what exploded for the Big Bang? Well, they don't know. It has already been explained like a gazillion times that the Big Bang was not an explosion, but an expansion of space. If the Big Bang were an explosion, it would have looked something like this. The green lines represent the background space, and the orange dots represent the material being ejected from the initial singularity into the surrounding empty space. This is not what happened. The Big Bang would have looked something like this. Initially, matter and energy is uniformly distributed across all of space at every moment in time. The particles do not move with respect to the background space. They appear to be moving apart only because space is constantly being created between them as the universe expands. When did that happen? Well, we're not exactly sure, but about 20 billion years ago. Actually, we know the age of the universe to one part in a thousand. It's between 13.64 and 13.86 billion years old. Then nothing happened for a long time. We have a big old long period of nothing. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely nothing happened in the 9.18 billion years between the Big Bang and the formation of the Earth. You know, except for inflation, quark gluon plasma to hadron transition, decoupling of neutrinos, electron positron annihilation, Big Bang nucleosynthesis, recombination, formation of dark matter halos, formation of all the spectral types of stars, formation of all the classes of galaxies, formation of all the types of planets, synthesis of all elements heavier than helium on the periodic table in the core of stars, production of dust grains and interstellar molecules, and of course the development of clusters and superclusters of galaxies. Do you realize this? With all the stars that we have in, in the universe today, scientists say the estimated number right now is 70 sextillion. That's the number 70 followed by 21 zeros. Whoa is right. That is a lot of stars. And they say all those stars formed in 20 billion years? Wait a minute. Do the math on that with me. If 70 sextillion stars formed in just 20 billion years, that would be the same as three and a half trillion stars forming every single year or six and a half million stars forming every single minute. Do we see six and a half million stars forming every single minute? No. no. That would have to happen for 20 billion years to get the number of stars that we have in our universe today. The 3.5 trillion stars that form every year are forming throughout the entire observable universe. Today, the observable universe has a radius of about 46 billion light years and thus has a volume of 4 times 10 to the 32 cubic light years. Thus, if 3.5 trillion stars form every year, then only one star has to form every year in each sphere of radius 50 million light years. This is consistent with the observed fact that about one star forms in the Milky Way each year. Well, everything got into this little dot, right? And then the dot began to spin. And it spun faster and faster and faster and faster. And finally, the dot exploded. The Big Bang. Um, literally nothing he just said has anything whatsoever to do with the Big Bang Theory. The textbook that he is reading from is describing the formation of the solar system 9.18 billion years after the Big Bang. Well, how do you get the world to make itself? That's a hard trick right there. How do you get the Earth to just form? How do you get the universe to make itself out of nothing? Well, evolutionists were thinking about that for a long time, and finally they came up with an idea, and they called it the Big Bang. This is obviously not how the Big Bang Theory came to be. The Big Bang Theory is an explanation for various observed facts about the universe. 
For example, the Big Bang Theory explains why the light that we receive from distant galaxies has longer wavelengths than we would naively expect, why the universe is filled with microwave photons that do not originate from any object, and why 75% of the mass of atoms in the universe is hydrogen while 25% is helium. It also explains why there are clusters and superclusters of galaxies, but no super superclusters, why there are no objects older than 13.75 billion years old, and why we cannot see any objects in space further than some given distance from Earth. Hey, another thing. If the Big Bang Theory were true, everything should be evenly distributed. But it's not. It's lumpy. You got clusters of stars and then zillions of miles of nothing. The initial distribution of matter and energy across space was almost, but not quite, perfectly uniform. Regions of the universe that were slightly denser than average became more and more overdense because their gravity attracted matter from the surrounding space. Likewise, the regions that were slightly less dense than average became even more underdense as their matter was pulled into the overdense regions. The end result of this process is filaments of galaxies surrounding great voids.